Hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. Just figured I'd show you some of the uh, upgrades and modifications that I've uh, done to my setup so that uh, I can have more comfortable camping. So this is the wall tent people have seen in previous videos. Got the stove set in and that kind of thing. I'll just uh, come around and go inside it now. As you can see I don't have the hammock strung up this time. I'm with the family so we decided to go with some cots instead. I'll just open it up, go inside. So we just threw down a blue tarp to kind of keep things off the dirt a bit. You know? and so these are the cots set in. I'm using the Thermal Rest uh, Ultra Light Cots. There's an extra large on that side. I've got a little camp table to kind of just put some things onto. And I've got another uh, um, Thermal Rest Cot. It's just a regular size. sits on this side. And then wife wants me to take shoes off, so hold on. And then I've got my cot down at the end. It's another extra light, uh, extra large thermo rest. Kind of peel back the layers. So it's a mylar cot with I uh, put a wool blanket on top. I'm not even using the zipper to sleep in, uh, or uh, using the sleep bag zipped up to sleep in. I'm just using it like a blanket, and it's warm enough. No issues. So there's the stove. You've seen Old Faithful in previous episodes. I don't have it going right now because it's pretty warm and it's the middle of the day. We just finished having dinner so we kind of let things die off. But yeah, there's the stove. The cookie sheets is a kind of heat shield. Um, I did put extra modifications. I don't know if you can see it. I put some wires that strap to the stove down to where the heat shield connects. I attach those on because uh, from the stovepipe would lift in heavy winds. So and I just wanted to stop that so I tent pegged it to the ground and just strapped it on to where the uh, air throttle is if you will. So up in the ceiling now I've got uh, a 16 ampere hour solar battery. I've got a better solar panel that I use but it feeds off to um, these lights I'll just show you they're running a string so there's a low a medium or sorry an off a low and a high setting but there's one down there one here one there and then one by the other entrance a single light is easily enough on high to light up this entire tent but uh, like I say so it's kind of got a lighting system set in play now uh, I'd turn that on for you here just give me a second It's not going to look that bright in the. It's not going to look that bright in the daytime, but it's uh, kind of lamp setting and then spotlight setting. I tend to normally have it on the spotlight setting. I'll just turn it off because I don't want to waste the power. But come on now, there we go. So yeah, just kind of. But yeah, this is camping. Uh, We've got the, the having the extra large for the kids allows one to sleep at one end and one to sleep at the other. That seems to be working out fairly well. I haven't had to set the uh, hammock up or anything and give up a cot. Because after all they are fairly comfortable. Sorry, I just put my shoes back on. So I do bring my tablet with me to record videos normally when I go. But uh, I uh, also decided to add on a bit to my sound. So over here, my sound and power. So over here, this is a Anchor 21 watt solar panel. I've been thoroughly impressed with this beast. I have my tablet, which I'm using right now. I left it running overnight and forgot it. Got it all the way down to 22% power. It was fully charged at 100% by about 4.35 o'clock. So I'm happy. It allows me to charge other things. So this is a little Bluetooth speaker I have that I can just throw a sound out from the uh, tablet to there and it runs on its own independent battery system which I have kind of tucked in, in into the shade there. I don't know if I can see that that good but it's in there somewhere. But there's a little battery that helps kind of amp the hours in which I can use the Bluetooth speaker. And the camp we're at, uh, somebody was nice enough to bring a chainsaw and kind of set up a bench and a uh, picnic table but uh, we've got propane there to cook the food family members and uh, doing some dishes and then uh, this is the camp pit area that we have so um, I have four chairs you got one sitting here but I got four of those chairs and a table that you saw inside the uh, the wall tent 
um, the stove, the lighting system, the tent, and the cots are all about 25, 30 pounds. And they easily um, packed into the car. Was able to take weeks worth of food for a family of four with us and still had room to spare, brought extra wood and everything else. So all in all, the efficiency of this tent has been really nice. One of the side effects that I've realized is on the really sunny days, given that it's kind of this olive drab green, and, um, even if I don't have the stove going, it seems to be uh, fairly solar absorbent. So the temperature inside the tent, even when the stove's not going, is uh, definitely a couple degrees warmer than it would be just exposed to the elements. So I'm quite pleased in that regard. I, like I said, had enough room in the trunk, so I just hauled along the uh, um, tent pegs and stuff. The, the setup I did was a little sloppy. It was more to maximize room. This, um, this hammock setup is kind of versatile when you set it up. Uh, it, it's not because there's nothing rigid. It's all just tie out lines and stuff. If I want to kind of gain an extra foot or so, as you can see, by the footprint it kind of sticks out a bit on the sides. I did that to purposely kind of gain an extra foot or so on the inside. Having the family four just want to have as much space as possible, right? But uh, yeah, I still haven't uh, replaced the uh, tent pegs with steel ones yet. And, um, still using the aluminum ones. I do want to upgrade given that I go into this gravel a fair bit. But uh, having the stove wired down has definitely been an improvement. The lighting system is far better than the one I had before. Um, off of a single charge of the battery, the lights on uh, low setting and having all four of them on, which is ample, um, is enough to run 32 hours non-stop before it needs to be recharged. So if I ran into a couple days where the weather was kind of dicey and I wasn't getting good sun, um, I could easily still kind of make do and get through it. Like I say, those anchor solar panels I've got sitting over there have just been top notch. And then I also have another little cheaper solar setup um, that I had from years ago. And I use that to, uh, I'll just show you, I've got it sitting on the tree stump here. This is just a little Canadian tire cheapy that I had bought that's a folding solar panel. That's all flexible and that kind of thing. It only throws out seven and a half watts though, whereas the anchor puts out 21. So it's a noticeable difference for sure when you're charging. And then they feed off to little lights that I can just hang out around camp and kind of make it like I have indoor lighting in the woods. Um, those lights, each one of them only lasts about four hours. It's one of the reasons why I kind of upgraded my lighting system in the wall tent if I just didn't feel they, these lights specific were lasting long enough. Whereas for lying around camp and stuff, yeah, if it dies off as the evening goes on, that's fine. But if you really want that light, like in a wall tent where you know, you might want that light on demand at any point in time. I didn't want to uh, play around with the, the lesser lighting system, if you will. So I also, just because I'm with the family and, and they want to have sleeping bags and pillows and blankets and everything else, I also went and picked up one of these bags from Canadian Tire, uh, Canadian Tire uh, cargo bags. You don't need any um, roof, uh, roof, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the roof rack. You don't need any roof racks to actually strap these on. You can just, as you can see, they go on by nylon. It's not the best quality in the world, but it's uh, 13 cubic foot of space. So it was enough to put all the sleep bags and everything else up there. It made it that the car wasn't overly packed. I know it's a bit of a mess now, because, you know, kids, <laughs> they like to play in things. But all in all, I find the comfort level of this camp has definitely uh, picked it up. If the kids end up fighting over the con, I might have to move up into the hammock. But as you can see, it's working out really well. Like you say, the, the stove again this morning was a real saver. It was probably about 8-9 degrees uh, outside. It was enough you could see your breath in the morning. And, and I'm up in uh, the Port Renfrew area, so the moisture up here is just through the roof. You're, you're into the fog belt country, if you will. Uh, getting fires going and that kind of stuff is a pain. But uh, uh, within, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes of having the fire going, the uh, inside of the uh, tent was a good 25 degrees and so. Everybody was happy. The kids were smiling first thing in the morning. It's always good and camping. So, yeah, no, it's been an overall really uh, good setup. I like the size. I like the weight uh, the portability and that kind of stuff. I'm still debating on adding on some things to the insides of the wall tent, like some uh, kind of storage nets and those kinds of things. Uh, the ridge line, as you can see, is being taken over by lighting instead of uh, hammock ridge lines, which I'm okay with. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully I uh, get out a few times in the next couple months with this bad boy and, uh, and uh, really give it a go. And if you uh, come up with any ideas that you think I should be adding to this, uh, just post a comment.